Okay, Rakun video before the open Thursday, 7th of August 2014. Hope you've had a good few days trading. It's been fast and furious, and that's exactly how I like it. So the big question now is, is it all over? Have we found a support level on the E-mini from which uh, we're going to bounce into another kind of uptrend move? So has the fat lady sung, and we're actually going to see a change in trend? Just to remind you, it was uh, Tuesday 29th of July, uh, which was this day, where I was talking about the importance of the 1960 level, uh, that a breakthrough that would take us into a big move. And that's what we got uh, the next day. And this is the support level on the 40,500 tip bar chart that we broke and turned us into a really nice uh, trending move that's turned out to be you know, 60 points almost to the downside from 1960. I think the uh, overnight low here was 1903. So how to think about uh, whether this down move is over and whether it's uh, time to dip your toes back into the market in terms of long trades. And this is how I think about it. You know, on the day trading charts, you know, I, I concentrate on the 500, the 1500, and the 4500 tip bar chart, and I'm looking for my little four point kind of swings on that. But in order to get the big picture, you have to, you know, raise your time frames. You have to go up a little bit. And there are two kind of levels that I go up. One is I look at those high time frame tick bar charts, the highest of which is the 40,500 tip bar chart. And then above that, the next one up is uh, back up to the this combination, which goes from a, a day uh, chart, a 135-minute chart, and a 45-minute chart. And the reason why I like this uh, is there's a factor of three going on again between these different time frames. So three times 45 minutes gives it gives us 135. Three times 135 gives us 405, which is the number of minutes in a day session of the E-mini. And then we've got the day session uh, data here. So you've got exactly the same principles kind of uh, being shown on this chart where you can look at multiple time frames to figure out you know, support and resistance. Remen remember, trending moves in lower time frames are equivalent to cycle moves in higher time frames. And you want to start to see these trending moves percolating through uh, these different time frames. And what we have uh, after um, Wednesday's trade is a really nice little pullback to end of trend sequence on the 45 minute chart. So we've got an exhaustion pattern on the left shoulder. If you think about this as the volume that kind of got this thing going on the downside, you can think, think of this pattern here. Uh, as being another kind of similarly large reading in terms of exhaustion that we've bounced from there, pull back to end of trend. And the move down here, we can see a nice blue professional bar coming in at the open on uh, Wednesday, uh, giving us a little kind of professional support at that pull back to end of trend. So here we go, we've got a trending move uh, that uh, has formed on the lower time frame, and it's syncing up with cyclical support on the daily time frame. Now this went off a couple of days ago, but you need everything to ripple through. It needs to ripple through from the lower time frames to then hit the higher time frame. So we know it's an important level because we've got a support level kind of printed around here on the daily chart. We've also got an exhaustion pattern here. Pro signal exit, blue professional bar is kind of coming in. But we have not had a pullback to end of trend sequence on the middle time frame, on the 135 minute time frame. This here, Again, we broke into a really nice deep uh, uh, trending, downtrending move here, and we've got nice things going on. We've got exhaustion patterns, bullish divergence kind of come in. We have not got price confirmation there with a pullback to end of trend. So what I think is going to happen over the next day or two is that we're going to have a bounce uh, after Wednesday's activity. So during Thursday, we're going to have a bounce. It's going to take us into that resistance area on the 135 minute chart and then we'll have another push down which will give us our pullback to end of trend sequence on the 135 minute chart. Uh, it'll sync up with an important kind of daily support level and then this next move up where we run pullback to end of trend so res uh, support to resistance on the daily chart that will be the key to show, show us uh, really how strong the market is. How big of a bounce back up we'll get up to these kind of 1980 type levels. If it's really weak, if we get blue professional bars coming in way before we get close to that level and we start to turn around and just can't make it through, uh, then it's showing a really you know weak buying scenario and we're likely to fall back after that pullback to end of trend into a, a decent downtrend. Uh, remember we're at the beginning of August right now, you know, September into October tends to be the weakest time of the year. 
uh, kind of seasonally wise. So I could see us having a little bit of strength uh, before kind of running into that kind of seasonal pattern. But let's wait and see. There's no need to kind of call it, but just I'll be watching that pullback to end of trend sequence once it goes in. So has the fat lady sung? No, we have the first um, kind of left shoulder being made by this pullback to end of trend. We've got to see the next thing to, to show is pullback to end of trend on the 135 minute chart. And then we've got cyclical support kind of playing in here. We've tested it a bunch of times, first with this end of trend and then the next one that we'll see on the 135 minute chart. And that'll be the signal where we can start thinking about kind of, you know, uh, playing to the long side a little bit more aggressively. Now, are we going to dip through the lows of 1903? I don't know. Again, another kind of sign as to whether the market is strong uh, or weak at the moment. You know, judging by the bounce from the pullback to end of trend on the daily chart will show us whether the bounce up is weak. If we continue to drop and, and test the lows through 1903, then the market is, is weak. Uh, but if we if 1903 kind of holds and we're just kind of playing around in this, you know, kind of teens type zone, when we test down pullback end of trend on the 135 minute chart, then that will show the market strong. So we'll be able to judge it kind of from there. So uh, just to show you another couple of charts um, on this kind of big picture stuff, in terms of the bond oscillator, so this is free code that you can get on the site. This is just comparing uh, the uh, SPY with the TLT. So these are two ETFs. One is uh, the stock market and one is the bond market. And it gives us a relative kind of uh, overbought and oversold levels. And it prints these kind of overbought levels as white bars up here and then oversold levels as blue bars kind of here. Uh, sorry, uh, my color blindness coming out there as red bars coming in here. And you can just see that a couple of days ago we had a little red bar kind of plot over here. So we got kind of briefly oversold uh, compared to uh, bonds. So we've got an area where we're starting to find value in terms of the market. So we're going to get a bounce from there. Another kind of interesting pattern. Better X trend kind of broke down on all the other time, uh, all the other indices. You know, we had the Dow, the S and P, uh, the Russell, and so on. All of those kind of broke down nicely into downtrends. But the Nasdaq did not. The Nasdaq's held really quite nicely here above this kind of support level on a daily basis. Uh, so we got that um, support. It's interesting that it's around that area that the Nasdaq has ha held, uh, kind of going on. So you know, again, another reason why we could get a little bit of a bounce in time. You know, over the next couple of days, kind of just testing that that support level and then having another go at the uh, the highs. Um, in terms of long-term charts, again, one of the reasons why I like this uh, 45, 135 and daily uh, market kind of combination is this lowest time frame chart, 45 minute chart, is very similar to the highest tick frame chart, the 40,500 tip bar chart that I use. So, you know, day trading wise, it's the 515, 4,500 tip bar charts down there kind of mucking around with looking for little, you know, um, f trending moves that are 8 to 10 to 12 type points and picking out four point trades. Then, you know, the bigger picture is looking at these 40,500 chart. And then, you know, the bigger picture on top of that is looking at the daily charts. But this is a really n neat little kind of time frame on the E-mini because it's very similar to that 45 minute chart, which is the bottom of that those higher time frame charts. And here, you know, we've got the same kind of um, pattern played out. Yeah, you know, it was the 1960 level that was kind of key. It was the low of this bar uh, that was really kind of a key level there. And when we broke it, we had a nice support level that came in and then we broke that properly into a nice downtrend. And from here, you know, we've uh, we've ridden it down all the way to a uh, pullback to dirty end of trend. Again, doesn't signal a little a neat end of trend there because the pullback level was violated, but that's a dirty end of trend. And it's come with all these good things like, you know, exhaustion on a left shoulder. It's, it's beauty, you know, in terms of pretty moves down here. Exhaustion on a left shoulder, Bullish divergence kind of comes in. It's not by the zero line, but you know it's a decent kind of read. The blue professional bar is kind of starting to pick it up at those lows, and then we come back with yesterday's activity, Wednesday's activity, and we put in a flush pattern, flushing out all of those sellers at 1903. People think, oh my my lord, this thing's going through 1900. It's you know bombs away type stuff. No, kind of that holds. We flush out all of those sellers, and we start to with that blue professional bar at the end of the day, start to find some support here. So we've got some good things kind of going on in the 40,000. 500 tip bar chart and that's incredibly similar to the 45 minute chart and that's why I like those two kind of time frames looking at them together. You get better data out of the tip bar chart because uh, better pro-am is more accurate on a tip bar chart, uh, better momentum is also a little bit more accurate on a tip bar chart and you get smoother patterns in terms of better sine wave as well. That's why you know all the reasons why I like kind of um, 
uh, tip bar charts in general. All right, and I'm going to tag on just because it was a nice little trade. First thing on uh, Wednesday, it was a one shot, one kill for me. We had a little triple going on. It wasn't a classic in terms of um, setup because we didn't have enough kind of blue professional bars kind of confirmation, uh, but it was a triple in terms of support. So I'm just going to show you this quickly. This is the open uh, on Wednesday. So on the 4,500 tip bar chart, we had support uh, being made uh, pre-open. We had blue professional down bars kind of coming in here. As soon as the open kind of came in, that support level was holding. Uh, on the 1500 tip bar chart, it was a nice pullback to dirty end of trend, uh, starting to hold as well. And on the 500 tip bar chart at the open there, you can see we'd had another trending move here, pullback to end of trend and support holding there. So it was a triple in terms of support going on there. What I would have liked to have seen more of is blue professional down bars here. If one of these had been kind of a down bar, that would give me real kind of confidence that this was going to uh, really had professional support. But what we had instead was amateur down bars. We had amateur bars kind of testing down. You can see it a little better on the 500 tip bar chart here. This little sequence here, just after the open whole little series of amateur down bars. Amateur's going short there and then uh, this blue professional bar is jumping the creek because the high for the day, you know, we've been open less than five minutes or so. They jumped above the high of that day, got this thing into a trending move. And it ran um, past our pullback to end a trend on the 1500 tip bar chart. But remember, we're looking for everything to come together. We need to see exhaustion as well. So it ran all the way up to 22s up here. I jumped out after my four points, so I was in at seven and a quarter, out at eleven and a quarter. So, you know, kind of feel stupid that it kind of uh, went so far. And in my head, what I was expecting it to do was to make a move like this and then go for a sell-off and put in an exhaustion pattern and then have a real strong rally from there. But it didn't. It kept on kind of, it went the other way. We ended up with an exhaustion pattern like this during the day, and then it kind of fell off in the afternoon. But anyways, it was a it was a nice little one. Uh, the reason why it was uh, a good setup was we had triple support and then testing amateur testing bars. And as soon as we start breaking up above uh, these resistance levels on those three time frames, we're moving into trend moves. So on the 1500, you can see us breaking above there. On the 4500, you can see we break broke above there. And with a nice pullback to you can it's out of the screen there, but that's pullback to end of trend uh, going off there picking off the high of the day, which is a nice one. And on the 500 tip bar chart again, breaking above uh, this resistance. I uh, hope your trading is going well and uh, looking forward to the next couple of days. Okay, just going long seven and a quarter. Long seven and a quarter. Show my stops and targets. And uh, I'm jumping in without professional bar, uh, which isn't Great, but anyway, reason why getting in, we had this lurch down uh, pre open, uh, got us down at I think 1902, something like that. So, what was, what was the low? 1903, okay, his first blue professional bar. So, um, pull back to dirty end trend on the 1500 tip bar chart. All these blue professional bars kind of came in here. We've just been uh, messing around testing this 1906 level here. Uh, but the reason for getting here we go a little bit of a gathering pattern so we need to break above the highs of those blue fresh bars so uh, we're showing strength after the open because we broke through the resistance level uh, we've got you know support in here at the end of a trending move we've got support in here so we break we come back and test what I was looking for at 1906 a little blue fresh bar coming in here and then breaking the highs of that and then getting this thing going so just back down to entry, okay, a little testing, amateur down bars. So we've broken above here, we want to break properly above a resistant, uh, resistance level and get it going into an uptrend. This one's potentially in play, uh, to be broken kind of two at once, up here at uh, 1908. So, so far the first blue freshman bars have come in at the top of the rise, uh, instead of, you know, on a dip, that's why we're having weakness still. So I'm going to down bars. Alright, here we go. We're getting going. That blue fresh bar was jumping the creek. So we came back, tested it, and down bars down here. Then we quickly came back above the highs, bang, busting above. Resistance here on 1500. Um, and eventually we'll put another resistance and bust above that on 500. So bit of exhaustion just showing the strength of the buying getting going through that channel totes 11 a quarter pretty weak though the um, 
with big sell-off moves like this though kind of pre-open what we really need to see is exhaustion selling during the full liquidity of the day during the open uh, in order to flush out everybody that's kind of not enough that reading and that and during today during the pre-open is not enough to really bottom this so we might be just going for a little bit of a rally and then need to come back and get that exhaustion pattern in but we're still breaking so let's hold on here we go. We're up at ten and a quarter, looking for eleven and a quarter. Uh, I'm going to punch out there just because I think it, e it could easily kind of just come back and go for that exhaustion sell to get it going. But let's hope for the next place up to stop would be a pullback to end of trend move on the 500 tip bar chart, syncing up with resistance here. So uh, come back up and go for that exhaustion pattern. We can see how quickly we can get a retrace. Bang! They just hit it after bearish divergence kind of come in. But it's amateur down bar stuff into a Rambo pattern, so it's being led by the amateurs just a bit, a bit, a bit too early. So um, to catch them out, what we do is we they break it back up above this high at ten and a quarter. Was it ten and a quarter? Ten and a half? Ten and a half? Get them stopped out and then come down again. So come on, let's. Hopefully that's what they'll do, just push it back up above that high and in the process take me out. Bingo, take it out, 11 and a quarter. Just as the blue professional bars is starting to come in on 1500 tip bar chart and we went for another exhaustion pattern. There's another one here, excellent. Alright, an 8000 reading, which is decent reading. So, um, still not, uh, you know, kind of a neat trend break, a pullback to end of trend kite type trend break on 500. So I wonder if we're going to, yeah, we're going to go for that. If we could keep on breaking up to 12 so and, and a quarter. That's fine. I'm quite happy to be out. Um, so we've overshot this resistance here, but at some point I'd have thought they'd want to push it back down and get an exhaustion, a proper clearing out kind of exhaustion on uh, 1500. So good. 8.42am. That was nice and fast. Uh, one shot, one kill. Excellent.